Well, hello YouTube. Never thought I'd see the day where I bought an M-Tech knife. Um, <laughs> it's actually something I never foresaw myself doing. But, um, I did do it. Um, let's see, um, make sure I got everything, that, all my notes ready. Um, yeah, basically what happened is um, there was this uh, guy on you not YouTube, um, Instagram, he's the cousin of a friend of ours that we met through um, uh, YouTube and Instagram. And uh, his cousin is a um, ABS um, drawing smith, um, bladesmith, and he's going to be testing for his um, a master smith uh, here sometime in the future. And his Instagram account is Ruthless Custom Knives. And he makes a lot of Bowie knives. And one of the interesting features about his Bowie knives, um, he has made a few of them with sub hilts. And uh, I commented on one of his uh, uh, sub hilt buoys. I was like, I'm not saying that you converted me to the idea of a sub hilt. I never used one. I don't know. But that one looks pretty uh, cool. And uh, he told me he felt the same way about sub hilts until he made a few of them. And he encouraged me to try one. And um, so this is a sub hilt knife in the box. And um, I was going to get a bokel, but it costs way too much. Um, for me just to play around with the concept. So I thought I would get an M-Tech sub hilt, play around with the concept of that style of knife, and if I wanted another one, I would get a quality one. Anywho, um, let's open up the box. Ta-da, M-Tech USA, not made in America. Um, and um, here it is, this is basically a uh, kind of a M-Tech version of a Bob Loveless Big Barrel. And um, when I first opened the box, I don't know why I was disappointed because, there you go, kind of gives you a hint that it's not made in America. Of course, that could be the box, um, but it does say design, custom designed in the U.S. That is not a false advertisement. Uh, Bob Loveless did custom design this. He lived in the U.S. That's a cool statement, but let's see, it, it is clearly not it's it's pretty obvious that's a Chinese made knife anyways I looked at the box I said this knife has an extremely sharp edge caution when opening the package mishandling incorrectly can result in serious injury anyways read that box picked up the knife and um, this was straight out of the box I could do this now kids don't do this at home <laughs> I'm pretty confident in the sharpness of this knife that I'm not going to cut myself. But, yeah, that's their extremely sharp, sharpened knife warning thing. Yeah, so um, I'm happy that they didn't put razor sharp, but it's still false advertising. I can really not cut anything with this edge. It's pretty flat. You can hear it. So I was a little disappointed in that fact, but keep in mind I didn't buy this knife because I was going to take it hunting or camping or going overseas or anything like that. I just wanted to test the concept of the subhilt fidel, and I don't really know how the proper way to grip a subhilt. And they refer to this as a trigger, so I don't know if you choke down and hold it like this or if it's choked up like this. But um, anyways. My goal, oh, sorry. Um, my goal for this knife, or what I was planning on doing with it, I was going to take it to an area, chop up bamboo, um, thrust into some bamboo, uh, uh, throw it at some trees, thrust into some trees, chop some vines, you know, some thick vines. And um, although it is dull, it won't cut. Uh, if you swing it hard enough, it can chop very poorly, but it can do it. So um, I did that, and my main concern with the sub hilt is um, that maybe in hard use that this might be able to um, um, irritate or uh, hurt your fingers in much the same way if you misuse brass knuckles and you can break your hand, and that was my concern. I can tell you just by waving this around and um, 
swinging it that the sub hilt does provide extra security and um, so I can really see this being a big advantage with a Bowie knife and um, you know this is almost a Bowie knife um, um, I'll get into the specs later but anyways I can feel the security with that well let's go ahead and go over the specs because that's what I usually do first and then I'll talk about my testing, which is interesting. This is an MTech. I got it on Amazon for um, $17.61 Prime, the Prime membership. And um, listen to the description. Do you like to hunt or go camping? Uh, then this 15-inch hunting knife is perfect for your next trip outdoors. It features a full tank sub hilt finger grip with 440 stainless steel doesn't say which 440 but it's a 440 steel uh, a 9.25 inch blade handle is made out of black hardwood comes with a nylon sheath don't be caught in the wilderness without it and um, so just to show you that maybe you can see it, it says 9.25 inch blade Look at this. When you look at the featured in details, it says 8.5 satin inch blade. So I didn't get my tape measure out, but that's pretty confusing right there. I don't know which one to believe. Uh, I'm thinking it's more just from how it handles it's the 9 inch. Um, but yeah, they are advertising it as a hunting and um, camping knife. Now I wouldn't necessarily use a sub hilt knife for that purpose. But then again, I wouldn't use this knife to go overseas either. Um, but there it is, um, in stock 1761. And um, I must say, between this knife and the Winchester Bowie, this knife all the way. I was very, very pleasantly surprised with my testing of this knife. And let me talk about what my original testing and then uh, I'll tell you about my destructive testing. My original testing, like I said, was um, chopping at bamboo, um, thrusting into bamboo, chopping at vines, uh, chopping at limbs uh, with the sub hilt, stabbing into a tree, and actually stabbing and prying. Uh, and, um, you know, don't worry, I wasn't getting too deep into the tree. It was mostly the bulk. Um, and um, like I foresaw, this was a little bit irritating uh, to the hand um, during that use. But you got to keep in mind that trees are hard. Even a softwood is hard. They're not as squishy as flesh. So um, I don't know if that if my um, fear is well founded because um, you know you stab someone in the gut. It's pretty easy. It, you know. We've shown how easy it is to thrust into meat and cut meat, although this is a really dull knife. Um, um, I don't know why. That just irritates me right there. But, um, you know, we showed how easy m meat is to cut and stab. So I don't know if I'll, be, or if I'll hurt my fingers thrusting into that, but my main concern was possibly if you're um, um, fighting someone that might have... Um, um, some kind of armor, like not the stat proof vest or anything, but maybe a magazine uh, um, pouch with magazines in it or something hard on their chest or abdomen. Um, but how often is that going to happen? But anyways, the knife performed beautifully for as, che for as a cheap a knife as it is. Stabbed it. Um, so then after I tested it with um, you know normal use or what I want I don't want to say normal use but how it was intended to be used with chopping and, sla and slashing and stabbing I was like well let's see how tough this knife is so I started throwing it and I started throwing it at this tr uh, tree and I was doing half spins uh, holding the blade like this uh, I was doing no spin throws and um, it stuck very well, which is cool. It was, I, I found it somewhat easy to throw and stick. And um, 
And then I was like, well, you know, it survived being thrown and sticking. Let's see how it fares if you throw it oddly and it hits all over itself. You know, hits in the handle, the, um, the guard. Um, you know, what if I just really chunked it hard at the tree? Remember, the Winchester buoy we thought would be a good value fighter uh, broke like when the first uh, two or three throws um, that uh, we put it in. We didn't get it on film but it broke very easily. Uh, this one I, I spent a good probably 20 uh, to 25 minutes maybe more throwing this at a tree at all different kinds of angles. I, uh, it knocked the uh, brass hollow pin out. You can see that um, the handles are separating But there was a little bit of play, but the sub hilt is still the hilt or the gold is tight, and the sub hilt is tight. But um, really, uh, what's moving is the handle scales, not really the blade and the tang and stuff. So, um, but it does have some play. You can kind of hear that. And I was like, wow, <laughs> this thing survived probably uh, 25 to uh, 30 throws, uh, one after another, progressively getting more sloppy and um, more uh, strenuous on the blade itself. And I, I eventually got tired of throwing it. I threw it so many times, I was really winding up and throwing it like a baseball. Uh, I was throwing it half spin, no spin, uh, hammer grip, um, um, all different angles, and I could not get this knife to break. Um, so yes, um, I am very pleased with this knife. Um, made in China, handcrafted in China, USA design in big letters, handcrafted in China in little letters. So, um, yes, if I had to choose a go-to-world knife between this and the um, uh, Winchester Bowie, this would be the knife that I pick. But I'm no way, shape, or form recommending this as a battle blade for soldiers or military or police officers to use. Uh, this is a wall hanger. Um, not to say you can't sharpen it on a belt sandal and ha put a functioning edge on it, but... Um, I want to trust my life with this, but I do trust it over the Winchester buoy. Now, I will tell you something I noticed with this knife. Um, it's a little bit more cumbersome to change grips because of the sub-hilt. Um, I can't change from um, reverse grip to ha a forward grip or a forward grip to reverse grip as easily with this knife because of the sub-hilt and um, how long the handle is. But, um, let's see, where was my other blade? The Hisatsu, I can maneuver and manipulate a lot easier than um, uh, that knife. So, in the end, what is my position on sub hilts? Uh, if for a combat utility knife, size knife, um, i.e. not a buoy, something that's a cable size, let's say 9 inches and smaller, or, or sub 9 inches, uh, I don't think I want a sub hilt on that uh, knife. Now for a buoy knife, I have mixed feelings, because I am a big, big fan of coffin shaped handles. But I feel that a buoy knife isn't something that you generally hold in reverse grip. So, um, um, with a Bowie knife, I can really see the sub hilt coming in handy, uh, helping you keep your grip against centrifugal force and heavy blows and stuff. But um, I don't think it adds that much to a combat utility knife. Um, but uh, for Bowie, if you're into a more modernized Bowie, I'd say it's a good design feature to have. But for smaller knives, uh, I don't think it's necessary, and I think it just gets in the way. So that's it. That's my review of this knife. Practically indestructible. I wouldn't want to 
uh, if it was razor sharp, I wouldn't necessarily want to bushcraft with it because of the s s separated handles, but that was my fault for throwing it. But I was doing it for testing purposes. Um, but yeah, this knife really, really surprised me once I got it out in the field. Obviously not with this edge, but with this durability. I hope y'all have a great day. And um, I'll uh, talk to y'all later. Bye.